Hello everyone. If you compare the immune system of our body to the defense system of our country, then the T cells of our immune system is very much comparable to the armed military force. They are like soldiers, right? They are like trained soldiers. And in this video, I'll be talking about how T cells develop inside the thymus. But first thing first, before even thinking about what type of training do they get in thymus, we should first talk about how they are born and their birthplace. So the birthplace of T cell is the bone marrow, especially the big bones, let's say the femur bone. So inside the bone, there would be specific regions. There would be vascular and endosteal niche. And in this specific niche, the T, the, the T cell or the B cell is born from the progenitor, from the hematopoietic pluripotent stem cell. Now, this hematopoietic pluripotent stem cell give rise to lymphoid progenitor or myeloid progenitor. And this lymphoid progenitor is the important one because this give rise to the adaptive immune system components, whereas the myeloid progenitor give rise to innate. Lymphoid progenitor in sequential step give rise to T cell precursor. T cell precursor are also progenitor by virtue and also B cell precursor. Now B cell remains in the bone marrow and their development takes place in the bone marrow. Whereas the T cell precursor they leave the bone marrow in order for them to go to a school which is thymus. So they enter the bloodstream and reach the thymus. Thymus is simply the training school of T cell. If we cut a cross section of the thymus, we get a view like that. Now, thymus is anatomically subdivided into several regions, and we'll talk about that its significance. So, inside the thymus, there are thymocytes, which are immature T cells. There are also thymic epithelial cells, and the whole thymus is divided into several layers, like subcapsular region, which is the peripheral most region, then cortex, medullocortical junction, and then the medulla. The T cells enter the thymus from the high endothelial venue. Now, once they enter the thymus, they move towards the periphery and they gather in the subcapsular region. In the subcapsular region, these T cell progenitors can divide and amplify their number. So they really divide and amplify their number in the subcapsular region. From subcapsular region, they descend down to the cortex. And in this process, they encounter thymic epithelial cells, which give them important training. So thymic epithelial cells could be considered as the teachers of these T cells. At this point of time, these T cells are really mature. They would undergo several degree of training and screening procedures throughout their school. From cortex, they move down to medulla and they also receive another set of training. And at the, after the medulla, when their training is done, they re-enter the high endothelial venue and migrate around the other parts of the body to the peripheral lymph organs, such as lymph nodes. It takes three weeks for this thymic training to complete. So it's a long time for them, right? And next couple of minutes, we'll discuss what type of training do they receive during these three weeks. <coughs> so when the T cells, the T cell progenitors are in the subcapsular region, they are known as the double negative T cell stage. It's a phase of their life. You can, just like we have our teenage, you can imagine the double negative stage is a phase of the T cell's life. At this point of time, they have the T cell receptor or the precursor of the T cell receptor, but they don't have the co-receptor CD8 or CD4. Now, the T cell receptor could be either TCR alpha or beta, or other it could be also gamma delta. Now, among these uh, double negative stage, there are substages. And these substages are characterized by specific marker expression. For example, in DN1 stage, CKT is pretty high, CD44 is present, 
whereas CD25 is not present. Whereas if you compare this stage to the DN4 stage, CKIT and CD45 and CD25, all of these markers goes down. So based on this expression of these markers, you can kind of kind of categorize them into specific phases. Now we'll talk more about these phases in a different video. But for simplicity, let's think about the, the double negative stage as a unified stage. Now, double negative stage is the time for the VDJ rearrangement of TCR genes. Just like the BCR genes, TCR genes also undergoes rearrangement. And that gives the diversity of the TCR and its ability to interact with so many different peptides. Now, first, the beta chain of the TCR is rearranged and eventually and sequentially the alpha chain would be rearranged but they don't get rearranged at the same time. Once both of the chains are rearranged the mature TCR alpha and beta is formed but there is also a possibility that it would form TCR gamma and delta but it turns out that TCR alpha beta is the prevalent isoform over TCR gamma and delta. The reason I will be deciding, I'll be discussing it in a different video. But now, after this double negative stage, they descend down to the cortex. They are still in double negative stage. When they go to the cortex, they start expressing both the receptors. Now they are termed as double positive. They started expressing the CD4 positive. CD4 co-receptor and the CD8 co-receptor and already by this time the by the time of double positive stage or at the end of the double negative stage their TCR gene rearrangement is done and they have a functional TCR by that time. Now in this double positive stage they have both the receptors. Now in the cortex they, they would like first interact with the thymic epithelial cells Point to be noted that these double positive T cell stage is a prevalent stage present in the thymus. Almost 80% of the cells of the thymus are these DP <coughs> double positive T cells. Now they would interact with the thymic epithelial cells. The double positive cells has to recognize the MHC bound peptides. So this is the first degree of their training and screening procedure. So they, their job is to understand peptides that are displayed on the MHC. In later point of their life, they have to do this job. So first, these thymic epithelial cells teach them how to recognize MHCs, be it a class 1 MHC or be it a class 2 MHC. Now, two distinct selection procedure takes place in the cortex. One, we call the positive selection. In this selection, the teachers, that means the thymic epithelial cell or the thymus, ensures that these T cells who are double positive, they learn how to recognize MHC bound molecule. So they ensure the MHC restriction. And there is also a procedure of negative selection. In this procedure, they learn, they learn how to recognize the MHC molecules, but the high affinity interactions are kind of killed. So this particular negative selection ensures that cell tolerance is maintained and there is no autoreactive T cells generated. In case of many autoimmune diseases, this negative selection mechanism fails, which creates, which turns our own defense system against our body, which is detrimental. We would learn about these negative and positive selections slowly and in a lot more details. So first, let's say this particular T cell can recognize uh, the MHC bound peptide. Now these peptides are mostly self peptides produced by these thymic epithelial cells. In this particular stage, their goal is to just to get familiarized with the peptides associated with MHC. Now if the if these T cells can recognize the MHC bound peptide, then they would proceed further and they would go for the next level of screening. And imagine 
if they don't or they fail to recognize these MHC bond peptides, they would die by neglect. And it turns out almost 90% of this population is dead because they cannot recognize MHC bound peptide with a decent affinity. So imagine how stringent this process is, right? Only 10% remains and they goes to the next level. The next level is in negative selection. So they had to learn how to select how, how to select or how to identify MHC bound peptides. But they also make sure that you should not engage with a high affinity interaction. So the T cells which engage with the MHCs with a moderate level of affinity or a low level of affinity, they go to the next level of selection procedure or they proceed in their career. Otherwise, the T cells which recognize the MHC and with very high affinity interaction, they are dead by the negative selection procedure. They undergo apoptosis. And the and this is a method of generating tolerance. And at this stage, it is decided that these cells should not survive because if they survive, they would turn against their own body, against our own body. They would create harm in our own body and they can cause autoimmune disorders. So this thymic education is very stringent and that makes sure the T cells gain specific skill sets but they don't turn against our own body now the job in the cortex is done and they have quite a lot of interaction with the thymic epithelial cells now they descend down from the cortex from the subcortical medullary junctions to the medulla where they interact with other thymic cort cortical cells and at this stage the double positive cells either recognize class 2 mhc or they would recognize class 1 MHC. The subpopulation, which would recognize class 2 MHC bound peptides, they would eventually stop expressing CD8 and upregulate the expression of CD4. Eventually, they would become the CD4 positive helper T cell. The population that would, that would recognize the MHC class 1 bound peptide, they would downregulate expressing CD4, whereas they would upregulate expression of the CD8. Eventually, they would become CD8 positive cytotoxic T cells. There is also possibility that these T cells that descend down to the medulla, which has already gone negative selection procedure, they don't recognize any of these MHCs or any of these MHC bound peptides. So they would straight cut tie by neglect. Now, there are also possibility that they recognize both the classes of MHC. Now, in that situation, they would also die by negative selection because they cannot be non-specific and recognize both class one and class two bound class two MHC bound peptides. So, all these different degree of criteria and stringent policies make the T cells really stringent and they learn how to recognize their uh, recognize MHCs and MHC bound peptides. Now their training in the thymus is almost at the verge of completion. They would descend down further the medulla, reach the high endothelial venue and now they would migrate all around the body and they relocate and now they are posted to the peripheral lymph organ like lymph node which are like army base camp after these veterans which which are t cells which got their training now it's their time to do the field work in order to do the field work they have to go to the army base camp which is the site of action right so now they are moving to the site of action which is the lymph node and in the lymph node they reside in specific barracks there is specific T cell region present in the lymph node. There they encounter dendritic cells and many other cells and which further help in their differentiation and maturation process. And that I have explained in a separate video called T cell differentiation. 
I would recommend you to watch that video for a complete experience. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you. And don't forget to leave your comments below. And that gives me a lot of motivation. Thank you. Bye.